This video is sponsored by Sobrancy Web Hosting. For more information about their limited time offers and how you can get 90% off your first month, stick around to the end of the video. Hey guys, my name is Ethan Discover. Welcome to the video where I teach you how to convert between JSON and YAML. Uh, so these two uh, are both file formats used for data storage, both used for very similar things. YAML is more common in workflows, JSON more common in APIs but ultimately they can be converted between the two. Um, I don't feel as though I need to explain the format because if you're watching this, you probably know how to do that, but we're gonna uh, be doing it in Python uh, because of course, this is Carpet Tutorials. We do everything in Python around here, um, except for the bit that we did in SQL, but that's that's besides the point. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the YAML to JSON and then do the JSON to YAML afterwards. So we have this YAML in file. This is one I, I copied from a Stack Overflow because I couldn't be asked to make my own because <laughs> I'm lazy. But it's it's a, it's actually quite a good example, to be fair, of just what a, a YAML file would normally look like. Um, and we are going to be converting this into a JSON. So you can see we have YAML in dot uh, y, uh, YAML. We're going to be creating a JSON out dot JSON using this YAML to JSON.py file that um, I created in a previous take and forgot to delete before I start this one. So that's professionalism for you. Um, uh, first of all, we need to actually install a particular library. So you can come to our CMD or Windows terminal, whatever you prefer. Make sure you uh, run it and in administrator permissions, unless you want to do a, a user install, then you don't have to, but either way, it's fine. Uh, so for me, the command would be pi 3.9 m pip install. You could do pip install, you could do pi and pip install, you could do python and pip install. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I'm, I'm just choosing to do it like that because if you have multiple versions of Python, it's probably better you specify the Python version, even though pi m would use 3.9, but whatever, it's fine. Um, and then there are two libraries that you can install for this. The first is PyAML, which is you may have heard of in the past, um, but it is a little outdated in the fact that it doesn't actually have YAML 1.2 support yet. It only has YAML 1.1. However, there is a library out there that does have uh, YAML 1.2 support. Unfortunately, it's a bit weird. Um, I, I don't really like how it does most things, um, but it, it works for this purpose, so whatever. And it's going to be uh, ruml.yaml. And yes, it does have a dot in its name, I don't know why. Um, again, there are some choices that I don't particularly agree with, but in terms of functionality, it is the most up-to-date YAML library there is. So you can do it. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but you will need to install it. Inst I don't think it has any dependencies, but you need to install those. Uh, so we need to import JSON, and then if we want to comply with PEP8, we leave a line there because it's a custom library. And we're going to do from uh, ruml.yaml import uh, yaml, um, which is not a constant. It's a it's a constructor, which again. Well, it's a class technically, but whatever. So we can have our in file variable, which is our yaml in dot yaml, and then we have our out file, which can be json out dot json, and then we create our yaml object, which is our yeah, which uses our yaml class, and then you pass the type as safe. It, it's tip because type is a keyword argument, and I get I think type is the standard. To ignore that, I kind of prefer doing stuff like that, but whatever, it's fine. I'm really unloading my um, style opinions on people in this video, but whatever. Um, so from there, it really is just a simple case of with open in file uh, in read and then encoding uh, equals UTF-8. If you're on Linux, you don't need to do that. If you're on Mac, if you're on Mac, I don't know. If you're on Windows, you do need to do that. Well, you don't necessarily need to do it, but it's not on by default and specifying it's UTF-8 just makes encoding errors harder to hit. So it's all good. And we're going to have as I. Uh, and then we're going to set data equals a uh, yaml.load uh, I. So this works very similarly to how the JSON works. Uh, and then we can do with open out file um, in write mode, sorry, not repo. Uh, and then again, encoding equals UTF-8, I think it's a blind water correct, as O for output. And then uh, JSON dot uh, dump. Uh, so we dump our data dictionary into our file. Uh, we'll give an indent of four to make it look pretty. And we'll turn ensure ASCII off, um, which forces it to use UTF-8 encoding. 
Uh, that is on by default. That is true by default, and I have no idea why, because it's stupid. Um, but if you run this, you'll see we have our JSON out file. So if I can find my mouse, there we go. We have this, so it is converted into a, a proper JSON. This is, is JSON format. Congratulations, you've made a JSON out of a YAML format. Um, that terminal is huge, by the way. Um, so that is uh, YAML to JSON. Very simple. Uh, JSON to YAML is a little bit more complicated, uh, but it's not too bad. So we need to create a new, another new file, and we're going to call it JSON to YAML.py. I guess we don't need the two files, but whatever I'm doing it anyway. And ultimately, everything. I think the first good few lines are the same. Pretty much, uh, you just change this to uh, JSON, and you change this, whoops, whoops, come on, there we go, and you change this to YAML. Uh, so we're now taking a JSON in file, which is uh, this here. So as you see, it's pretty much the same uh, file, I've just made a few few modifications. Yeah, just yeah, just a few minor modifications, uh, nothing too, <laughs> nothing too major. Um, yeah, we're going to be converting that into our YAML. Um, it, again, this one is a, a little bit more complicated. It took a little while to work out um, because if you were to do it, well, actually, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, so you can have with open again. Actually, I think these are more or less. I can just kind of copy the rest of it as well uh, here, and then uh, we just need to change the lines here. So we have in file or whatever uh, data equals JSON dot load. Oh, I see. You can see that's pretty much the same. Uh, have a we do a yaml dot dump here and then we actually get rid of all these so if we do this notice you'll see our yaml out and we think oh well that's not the same as it was what happened to the formatting um well this is actually a valid yaml format however we do have the option to turn it into the yaml that we know and love which is this so we can make it look like this it's fine uh we, we, We'll lose the spaces, but I don't think those really matter. Um, so what you can do is you can do yaml dot default flow style uh, equals false, and then we can do that. We'll just overwrite the file that we already have, and as you can see, again, it doesn't preserve it doesn't preserve the um, the uh, the spaces, but we do have a standard looking YAML file there, complete with modifications and all. <laughs> But yeah, uh, converting between JSON and can I? Okay, apparently I can't split. This. Actually, I can. Let's have a nice little two-column layout. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, as you can see on the screen, it is it is really simple to convert between two. Of course, you can have it in a separate file, but it's easy. It's easy enough to do in a function. Uh, should you ever need to do that. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. While you're down there, I recommend you take a look at my socials. So I've got Twitter, Facebook, library, all that good stuff. Um, and I also have a new Twitch channel that I'm streaming stuff. Uh, if you're watching this near the time of upload, the next stream might be the planning of the Twitch series that I'm uh, doing. However, if you're watching this a little bit in the future, then I am planning to do more streams on there anyway. So just tune in for whatever is there if you're interested uh, in a bit of live coding. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, then say down below. If you really liked it, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. And if you really, really liked it, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Of course, you don't have to. A really cool thing of you to do. And I'll end the video with a word from this video's sponsor, Sabrancy. If you're looking to bring a project to life or start a new business venture, Sabrancy is a great way to kick things off. Whether you're looking for a free solution to get yourself up and running or a powerful plan that sets the sky's the limit, they've got your back. With a plethora of features at your disposal, Sabrancy will never leave you asking for more. Don't be afraid to ask for help though, as their 24 7 support line means the answers you need are just a few clicks away. If you're quick in a drawer, you'll be able to get their pay plans for up to 65% off. However, if you're a little late to the party, don't worry, as you can still use the code CARB90 to get 90% off your first month's hosting. To sign up for Sabrancy's fast, affordable, and reliable web hosting today, head over to to sabrancy.carbro.xyz. See you in the next video.